Hey guys, Herbsman here, chilling in the strain forest, aka my grow room, checking out the girls. We are getting towards the end of veg now, um, about five or six days. I should be able to take some clones off these girls and get this tent flipped into 12-12 and begin our flower cycle. Um, posted a video a few days ago. Did a little bit of defoliating and then went ahead and applied a soil drench with a aloe and silica solution and they seem to have responded well. Nice and perky, they're growing at a great rate. So we are moving right along. So today I decided I'd make a video and talk a little bit about biochar. If you're not familiar with biochar guys, this is a great amendment to add to any soil mix. Biochar is more or less just burnt wood. You can make it yourself or you can buy it in a bag like I've done. And uh, all it is is hardwood that's been burnt and um, all the impurities and organic residue is burned away leaving behind nothing but rich carbon material. This is a hundred percent carbon guys. And all these little chips and pieces of carbon have tons of little holes and pores and crevices for your microbes and your fungi to colonize in. Also, um, it absorbs nutrients and stores the nutrients. It's more or less a hotel for all the goodies that are in your living soil. It's a place for all your microbes to live. So this bag of biochar here is raw and uncharged, meaning there's been nothing added to it. It's just plain old carbon. So you can add this directly into a soil mix, but beware, there is a danger that the char can rob your plants of the, the nutrients in the beginning. It takes about a month or so in a soil mix for the char to become inoculated. So what we do to prevent the char from robbing our plants is we'll pre-inoculate it or we'll charge it and how I do that there's numerous ways to do it but the technique I use is I mix it with a 50-50 earthworm castings and char luckily I just harvested some fresh earthworm castings so this is perfect time to make my char this is loaded with all the microbes all the fungi and nutrients that I want the char to soak in. So, like I said, I'll do a 50 50 mix, half and half char and castings, and I'll let that charge up for about a couple weeks. Also, what I'll be adding to it is some nutrients. So, here we have a bag of down to earth, dry, all purpose organic fertilizer. And their organic fertilizer is just a combination of a bunch of different meals. There's some kelp meal in here, some alfalfa meal, soybean meal. Yeah, so there's just a bunch of different meals. There's some rock dusts. Any um, organic dry amendment will work. I just prefer to use the uh, all-purpose because it's got a wide variety. And so all those nutrients will get stored in our char along with all the bacteria and fungi from our earthworm castings. If you don't have earthworm castings available to you and you'd like to charge up some biochar, there's other ways to do it. If you have a compost heap outside, you can just put the uh, char right into your compost pile and over time the microbes will migrate into it and all those nutrients will be absorbed by it. Um, you can mix it with grass clippings I've heard. Just the char mixed with grass clippings. Grass clippings are very rich in nitrogen. So by uh, putting it in a, in a barrel with grass clippings, the char will soak up all the nitrogen from the grass. I've actually also heard that people are peeing on char because uh, apparently urine is loaded with nitrogen. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't suggest it and I'm definitely not going that route, but if that's what you got, and that's what you have to do go for it but anyways my preferred method is with the castings 
These are fresh castings. Always best to use fresh. Um, anytime you're using organic materials, compost or whatever, it's always better to use a fresh source. Whenever you get a bag of compost or castings from the store, you never really know where that bag of castings says came from, how long it's been sitting there. Was it in a hot truck? Was it sitting in a warehouse in the heat? Microbes do not like heat. They don't want to be cooked. It, it, did it dry out? You know, there's all types of variables. Before it gets to you, you don't know what could have happened to that bag. Did it sit in a truck for a few days? So, if you start making your own earthworm castings, that's just the uh, that's just the best case scenario. So yeah, guys, we're gonna go ahead do a 50-50 mix. Let it sit in the barrel for uh, I'd say about two weeks, and um, once all those nutrients and all those bacteria and fungi have migrated into the char. You can actually see a difference in the consistency. It'll be nice and moist. Kind of look similar to how the castings look. Then I'm going to be using this char as an amendment in my soil mix. So I'm going to be making a new soil that the clones from these girls will be planted into. So I'm trying to stay ahead of the game. So before I take my clones, I want to have my soil ready and cooking. So in a few days, I'll post a video showing you guys how I amend my soil and how the recipe that I follow to make this living soil. And that's really the whole key behind this whole operation. It all starts with the soil. Once you got a good soil with a healthy um, hummus portion, everything else is cake. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to uh, inoculate this char. If you guys want to learn more about char, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. And a simple Google search will reveal a ton of information about how to inoculate it. There's ways to make the char yourself with a burn barrel. Um, for me, this is just easier to buy a bag. I'm a small scale guy. Um, it does get expensive when you're buying quanti quantity but for me one bag lasts me a pretty long time so I just buy the bag simple but uh, yeah you can build a burn barrel you can have a fire outside and collect the char the whole thing is you want the char to be eliminated of all the wood material and just have um, carbon left behind you'll know it's good char if it sounds like glass when you drop it in a bucket should have like a solid light glass like sound when you drop it and um, the whole idea of biochar I'll give you a brief uh, history lesson it comes from um, terra preta which is to this day the most fertile soil on the planet it comes from South America and um, biologists believe that um, that soil, the reason the soil there is so fertile is because for thousands of years, I can't remember if it's the Incans or the Mayans or what civilization it was that started it, but they would burn down the forest every year. And in essence, they were creating biochar. And over time, that soil has become so rich that to this day, there has never been a more fertile soil on the planet. So basically we're just replicating that. So definitely important to charge your soil, I mean charge your char. If you don't inoculate your char, there's that slight chance that it could um, rob your plants of the nitrogen and cause some deficiencies. So you definitely want to give it at least a couple weeks in a compost pile or like I do with my castings. And you got to give those microbes and those nutrients time to uh, absorb into it. So anyways, we're going to make the char. We're going to, in a few days, we're going to mix our soil up. I'm going to take some clones. And we're going to keep the whole thing rolling. 
Um, if you guys have any questions, like I said, I don't really script these videos. It's kind of just off the top of the head, so I may have missed some things. Feel free to post any questions, any comments, any criticisms you can leave down below. Hopefully, um, this will help you guys get started doing some organic gardening. And, um, yeah, happy growing. Peace.